Hi everyone, this is Harsha from Midas IT. Uh, today I will be giving you a overview about uh, Midas uh, liquefaction analysis and how that can be produced in Midas uh, GTS NX. So let's say uh, this is a 2D model which has been uh, um, kept in front of you. Uh, basically this is an abutment layer and uh, these two are embankment layers and uh, 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 this is like an uh, UBC sand. Uh, basically this sand layer is prone to liquefaction that's why we had taken UBC sand model and uh, this is is a, a uh, weathered rock and this is like a weathered uh, sorry soft rock uh, basically this is the different uh, mesh set color and uh, now I'll be changing this into material color so basically uh, what kind of materials we need we are provided for different layers we can you can able to cross check from the uh, model menu in the works free in the model uh, in the model tab of the work three just go to material and I sort of here you can see embankment of a dark blue color and a weathered rock and soft rock abutment a steel pipe and an UBC sand. So this is the different uh, uh, material properties that has been assigned to different layers in the model. And let's see uh, uh, what is the different UBC sand properties that has been provided. So here, this is a modified UBC sand model. Uh, here you need to input the elastic modulus, uh, poison ratio, unit weight, and uh, and here in the uh, porous material tab you can see only two drainage properties as we drainage parameters has been as, uh, given provided in uh, um, modified UBC sand and in the nonlinear properties you can find many uh, parameters and uh, constants regarding the UBC materials and property uh, formulas and these needs to be inputted in order to find those formulas you can directly press the F1 button in uh, keyboard it will direct you towards the uh, uh, help manual of Midas GTSNX where you can find all those formulas and required, uh, in, uh, required parameters for different commands. So basically we had run a time history analysis and uh, um, uh, we had given a ground acceleration at the bottom and I will be showing you the seismic function regarding the uh, uh, ground acceleration. In the analysis tab, just go to dynamic load. This is the seismic function for the required ground acceleration. Right click on it, you can directly direct it towards uh, the time function provided. So this is the earthquake data which we had provided uh, and uh, we, are, uh, we are like having a huge number of uh, earthquake uh, data in the in directly provided in the software. You can uh, use that at any point of time and the input function types can be all these are the different info, info uh, time function data types uh, with respect to time how the acceleration normalized acceleration velocity displacement or how these the all different kinds are getting varied that can be inputted and that can be applied as well and now if you're interested in a sinusoidal function if this is a sinusoidal function and uh, this is the different parameters just input the parameters and you will be having that graph so uh, basically ground acceleration has been uh, given and uh, I will be showing you gravity load so in here you can see the gravity and uh, the fun uh, here you can go for uh, uh, provision of gravity basically in the z uh, in the y direction you here you can see this is a global y and global x minus one has been given and uh, this has been assigned as load set one basically it's a gravity load so now the analysis has already been taken uh, and i will be showing you some material properties basically uh, uh, in in any dynamic analysis the following properties plays a key role in your results one is the stiffness and other is an um, uh, damping other is an uh, unit weight so basically these three play a key role in your analysis so uh, what is the damping ratio provided for your different layers? Uh, in order to provide a material damping, here you can directly provide a material damping for each and every layer. Here you can see the damping ratio for dynamic is of a 5% for embankment layer which has been taken. And similarly just provided a material damping ratio for each and every layer. Uh, and so let's say I had taken 5% uh, so in order to get a damping ratio for each and every layer basically we need to perform a 1D ground response analysis basically that 1D ground response analysis tab has been driven directly in the uh, incorporated in the software itself it's like additional tools where you can run the uh, 1D ground response analysis so let's ba come back to the liquefaction analysis here now this is a material damping that needs to be provided directly in the material tab now 
uh, so in order to cope up with the uh, 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 dynamic of uh, seismic function provided we need to have a certain infinite boundary condition so basically in this model we had taken a free field boundary condition for both your verticals uh, vertical edges from for left and right and uh, from here uh, in in the mesh tab in the element you can find a free field tab so just click on the free field tab and select the required edges and uh, the uh, you can directly give the free field boundary conditions so what is free field boundary condition basically uh, here in the free field boundary condition you can be so if when you uh, when you press on F1 button, you will be directed towards the help manual. In the help manual, go to mesh and uh, here you can find the free field. So basically in the free field, you, uh, your uh, uh, boundary condition will be like this. You will be, you will be having two dampers which will be placed for each and every node. So this will be helping uh, in order to have an infinite boundary condition like this. So this is basically an infinite boundary and this can be directly skipped off for, and you can directly provide a free field condition and this mo model will now behave as like a, this complete model. So basically this is the free field condition and that has been used in uh, uh, GTSNX of uh, the present model and uh, you can also provide the viscous boundary condition for that you need to go to create uh, elements and here in other in other tab you need to provide ground surface springs so here you can provide a uh, viscous boundary condition so basically this is about modeling in here and now let's uh, see the dynamic uh, time functions that has been provided uh, so you already seen the time function and we will be seeing in the time steps that has been incorporated for the time function so this is an in uh, the construction stage analysis in the first stage we, the entire soil layers has been taken and um, um, and we had cleared the displacement for the sulfate so basically sulfate has been activated and the, all the weight regarding the same has been cleared so in the second stage in the second stage seismic function has been provided and in here you can directly go for the damping method in here so when you go for analysis control and damping method here you need to provide the frequencies or time periods which for mode 1 and mode 2 uh, which you got in the eigenvalue analysis and this acts like an your radiation damping and whatever the uh, if you want to consider the material damping just click on enable this one and you can see the alpha and beta coefficients in here as well and let's say I'm not considering as of now So I, if you are interested in, uh, actually the time steps plays a key role in any of the, your analysis. So that all your uh, uh, different uh, curves means uh, the curve is not in regular is of a regular fashion. So in order to cope up with the different uh, irregularities, we need to provide a, uh, dif uh, means huge number of time steps. So in here, like um, for 15 seconds we are considering, and each increment is of 0 0.062 seconds, so that it is of total 242 steps. Um, this is about the time function and let's directly go to in results so I already ran the analysis and uh, you can directly click the post work and you will be directly towards the results so here in in the work tree go to results tab uh, so this is the different increments uh, uh, one two so you, you provided like a 0 0.062 second of each uh, time increment and uh, for 15 seconds so you'll be having a 240 252 basically 252 time steps and among these 252 time steps you can find a minimum maximum and absolute maximum data as well so now let's say I will be going to absolute maximum and I will be um, so I'm interested in as I'm interested in liquefaction whether it is prone to liquefaction or not um, let's say pore pressure ratio so this is a pore pressure ratio here you can find uh, as it is greater than one you can say you uh, this is like prone to liquefaction so it is already liquefied at this particular layer here you can see when you press the auto uh, means actually it gets rounded off when you press the auto range button and this complete area is now under liquefaction so uh, basically you can also see normalized max uh, stress as well initial stress by 
uh, sorry increase in stress by the initial stress basically so this is how you can do uh, let's say now I am interested in uh, plotting the hysteresis curve of the same so for that you need to extract the uh, shear stress and shear strain at a particular node of your interest and and uh, you need to run the you need to export the same data into Excel and where you need you can directly plot the hysteresis curve for that we'll just go to extract function in here and select the construction stage analysis in the construction stage analysis I'm interested in beam element strains so just click the beam element strain sorry not beam element uh, plane strain element plane strain element strains so in here the EXX so I'm interested in all except uh, the three other uh, uh, means the maximum minimum and absolute maximum and I am selecting an, an node at here so this is 433 node which I has been which has been selected by me now I'll directly click the table so at each step means at each time you can directly have the strain so just uh, copy these two and you can also you can when you click the right click right button of your mouse you can, you can directly export the same to Excel as well uh, let's say So now you can find that uh, it has been directly exported to Excel. Um, since this is the EXX and this is the time. So now I need to import. Uh, and I, now I need to import the stress at the same position as well. So let's say plain strain stresses. So I will be so total. Uh, this is like sigma XX total, and uh, this uh, this XX represents the effective and uh, the same 433 node has been selected just click the table again and in now control C and directly paste it in the Excel so now we have the hysteresis plot for this uh, uh, strain and the stress uh, so let's say when we are having an uh, liquefaction uh, the liquef uh, when the liquefaction takes place basically there will be like uh, uh, the, the unloading or loading curves will be like uh, going too far away now we will directly take the same uh, means uh, the data or the node we will select the node at particular layer where the liquefaction has been taken place so just select the pore pressure ratio and uh, go to extract it's again construction stage analysis and in here I'll uh, just go to beam uh, plane strain sorry plane strain uh, strains and uh, so I had selected 655 node now uh, let's sell uh, Control C and I'll paste the same in here. So again, and now in here, go to plane strain stresses table. So this is the plane strain stresses. So this is actually total. If you are having interest in the effective, then just select the table again and you are having only sigma xx so control c and control v and so basically i am directly shifting e x x and so you can see uh, as and how the uh, liquefaction takes place uh, you can see the loading and unloading curves of uh, uh, have means getting deviated from its original position so basically this is how you can plot the hysteresis graph uh, in uh, Midas GTSNX and uh, that is all about uh, the liquefaction analysis in uh, Midas GTSNX uh, thank you